Tonight, a new programming language born from Facebook, Google's encrypting everything, and free-range robots for the space station. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 48, for Thursday, March 20th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash TN2. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN, the number two. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Facebook engineers have created a new language called Hack that lets programmers build complex websites and other software quickly while making sure that their software code is organized and relatively free of flaws. It already drives most of the company's site that, of course, serves more than 1.2 billion people globally. The company publicly revealed this new language today, and at the same time, they open sourced it to share the technology with the world and encourage, encourage others to use and improve it. Facebook was able to gradually replace its existing PHP code with Hack, which the company says is more precise and provides more of a safety net for developers using it. Hack can also run without compiling. Quote, you edit a file and you reload a web page and you immediately get the feedback of, here's what the page looks like. After I made that change, there is no delay, says Brian O'Sullivan, an engineer at Facebook. He says you both get safety and speed. Well, Gmail got a little bit more secure in light of recent government spying revelations. Google's announced that Gmail will now use a secure HTTPS connection whenever you change, check, or send email, no matter where you're accessing Gmail from or what device you're on. Google made HTTPS encryption the default for its users back in 2010, but now every single email message that Gmail users send or receive will be encrypted as they move internally between the company's data centers. Google says this change became, quote, a top priority after last summer's revelations from former NSA contractor Edward Snowden. Speaking of Google, the company's online spreadsheet app, Sheets, has rolled out to everybody, everyone using the Chrome browser anyway, after being in opt-in mode since last December. Sheets supports offline editing, which will be a relief to anybody who felt a little debilitated by Google Drive's outage earlier this week. That would be me. Changes that are made offline in Google will sync your edits once you get a connection again. An indictment filed in federal court alleges that Microsoft authorized a search of an unnamed blogger's Hotmail account when the company believed that the blogger was receiving leaks from former Microsoft staffer Alex Kibcalo, who's accused of using various accounts to send proprietary code and software to the blogger relating to an upcoming release of Windows 8. The events date back to September 2012, at which time... The unnamed source, a different source, contacted Microsoft to say they had received some information from a blogger known for leaking Microsoft software releases ahead of the official launch dates. That's quite a lot of power, Microsoft. Twitter has launched a new tool on its Discover site to easily pull up anyone's first tweet, no matter when it was. Just enter the at username on the page and get started. Twitter's Discover page helps users learn more about the way Twitter works and how to connect with people, find out what's happening, and follow the news. Previously, users had to use third-party services to find their very first tweet. It was a good it was a good glass of wine. Coming up, one band is making money from Spotify with an album that sounds like no other. And up next, Cena Brewster is with us from Gig Ohm to talk a little bit more about robots at NASA's developing that uses Google's Project Tango smartphones. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace, on your own terms, from experts in the industry. With a subscription, you'll get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses covering many technical stills, creative techniques, business strategies. If you want to improve your photography, your software skills... Maybe you'd like to learn web design. Maybe you want to be a great programmer. You go work at the hack with the hack crew over at Facebook at lynda.com. You'll find top quality videos 
on hundreds of different subjects. You can also watch from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device. The instructors are pros. They're passionate about teaching. And each course is structured so you can learn from start to finish or jump in at any place you like. It's $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com library. For $37.50 per month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. Try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. That's a little gift from us to you. Go to lynda.com slash tn2 to access the entire library. That's over 2,000 courses, all free for seven days. lynda.com slash tn2. Joining us now is Sina Brewster, science and tech reporter over at GigOM. Hello, Sina. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. So you wrote a story uh, titled, Google's Project Tango could finally allow robots to roam free on the International Space Station. That sounds exciting. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, so anytime you build a robot, obviously you need to be really careful about safety. So you don't want a robot to run into you and hurt you or accidentally kill you. And that's even more important on the International Space Station. So um, basically the team up there is looking for ways that they can safely have robots roam around on the space station instead of right now, they kind of have them in a limited location where they can be safe. But that also means that it limits their usability. So what are these safe locations where they can at least replicate to some extent what it would be like off, off of the Earth? So right now, um, for example, they have these robots called spheres and they kind of look like volleyballs. And um, they sit in a six by six by six foot kind of pen. And they can do lots of things in the pen, but they can't go outside the pen and, you know, perform other tasks. So if, 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 if the robots are encased in pens now, at what point, how do we get from, from this? What does NASA have to achieve before the teams involved feel comfortable enough to have these robots uh, roaming in space? Right now, the reason they use these kinds of pens is that the robots then can communicate with their surroundings to make sure that they're not bumping into an obstacle or a person. But when Project Tango comes in, the idea is that this is a phone that can sense its surroundings. And if you equip this robot with this phone, then the robot in turn can sense its surroundings. So instead of it having to communicate with its surroundings, it can now just kind of know them by seeing them and work in environments that it doesn't necessarily know what it's going to encounter. Is most of the plan to have robots uh, who can fix things on the space station? Obviously the plan, there's so much human interest from people who, who want to get there themselves. It's not to replace uh, human space exploration. Is it more maintenance? It's Yeah, it's a lot of things. Um, different robots could be used for different things. So the main idea is they want robots that can do things that would be dangerous to humans. So yeah, that could be maintenance. Like recently there was a guy outside the International Space Station and his mass filled with water, which obviously is really dangerous in general, but then he's in space. So that's not a good thing. So if a robot could take that over, that would be a huge help for the astronauts who don't want to have to risk their life over a minor repair. Are there other uh, safety issues, uh, other places that these robots, uh, once they've sort of been proven to be a a good idea and do what they're supposed to do. Other places that uh, that NASA envisions they could go? Yeah, um, so NASA is embarking on some really ambitious trips in kind of the near future, like going to Mars or um, even exploring other near Earth objects. And that's something where a robot would be a big help where you don't want to maybe use a lot of resources to send a lot of humans, but you still need some extra help. Well, uh, switching gears a little bit, uh, because you wrote recently, uh, earlier today, about HP bringing a 3D printer to market in June. That's pretty exciting. Do we know much about price point and where it'll be available? So HP has been pretty mum on details, but the major things that they've said is that this printer is going to be fast and it's going to put out really high quality objects. And um, I guess I'm most interested in that speed point. Um, it's been really difficult to build a fast desktop 3D printer. And if HP can do that, then that would totally set them apart from everyone else in the market right now. Um, and they haven't set a price yet, but it seems like the first printer is going to be aimed at businesses. And right now in 3D printing, that means it could cost anywhere from 5000 to even a million dollars. So that will be up in the air for a while. Wow. 
All right. Well, the speed point. Uh, we'll focus on that then. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, well, Sina, thank you so much for being with us today and uh, filling us in a little bit more about uh, the science uh, area of technology. Tell folks where they can keep up with your work and what you do online. Sure. Head over to gigaohm.com or I'm on Twitter at SinaJB. That's S-I-G-N-E-J-B. All right. Thanks so much. You're probably really used to spilling it out for people. <laughs> Very used to it. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. Come back soon. Thank you. All right. Finally, this is, this is a good one. Rock band Wolfpack wants to make enough money from Spotify to not only cover the cost of an upcoming tour, but to not have to charge any admission to any of their shows. So they've released an album of complete silence. That's silence on Spotify. And the band is encouraging fans to listen to it on loop while they sleep. The album is called Sleepify. It's 10 tracks. It's 316 seconds long. And since Spotify pays Wolfpack half a cent per stream, the band calculates that users can help them earn $4 by streaming Sleepify on repeat if sleeping for seven hours. And I hope they do it because that's just about the most creative thing I've ever heard of. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.